Hello there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back again, we get another deck and I'm taking a break from Assassin's Creed today because I need to go back in time because Fabine, the boss's confidence, has eventually been added to MTGO. So before I go any further, this is the deck I'm playing on MTGO. I know Fabine's been around for a while, but even if you haven't seen it, it might give you some ideas as where you're going with it. Um, but it's one of the backlog commanders that's eventually been added and I figured time to cover it really so three red green and blue, white for a three six catavisor and creature tokens you control have haste okay that's 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 okay i suppose but parlay at the beginning of combat on your turn each player reveals the top card of their library each land card revealed this way you create a one one green white creature citizen creature token and then creatures you control get plus one plus one <laughs> until the end of turn for each non-land card revealed this way then everybody draws a card right so you're either going to get four one one creatures you're going to get plus four plus four to all your creatures or you're getting a combination of the two own combat yeah okay that this sounds really good and it is it's great fun and this is how i've built for being herself so we want to make sure we have creatures in play and the easiest way to ensure we have creatures in play is the Azorius Shepherd so our creatures can't be counted while well, green spells you control can't be counted and since most of our creatures are green nice little starting point for us um, the four and two green until the end of turn each health you control becomes as base power and toughness five five as a dinosaur is sometimes relevant not that often anyway ramp Avacyn's Pilgrim, a little bit of white ramp. Birds of Paradise for all the colours. Elvish Mystic for green ramp. Essence Warden for life gain. Fire Nord and Landward Elves for more ramp. We should be ramping quite hard with this deck with a bit of luck. From there, Ajani, Nactil Pariah. Um, I like Ajani. If you've seen the deck tech I did on it the other week, you'll know I do enjoy it. It's here. You don't have to play it, but it's got a bit of cat synergy. is always quite nice to have from my point of view um, hence if we can get them flipped into the Avenger um, and for beings back you start making for being big and that does kind of help with this deck bloom tenderer here because you know we must be trying to add three mana by tapping one creature when we can it's a red deck dock sides here sorry excuse me I have to have it here incubation druid helps us with our mana um, Joriel Monku recluse whenever you draw your second creature card each turn whenever you draw a send card each turn so you get a 2-2 green cat creature token we do have ways of doing it but it's more the um, 4 and 2 green until the end turn creatures you control have we have base power and toughness xx where x is the number of cards in your hand that is a lot more relevant in some cases elvish rejuvenated lets us go and find a land from the top of our top five cards of our library Ginny Fay means we're going to get lots of cats and lots of dogs cats do have their upsides as we just talked about so you know that's cool Rocco Street Chef lets us cast stuff from exile and then whenever we cast or play a land from exile we get to put plus one plus one on a creature and create a food token that has its upsides Sandstorm Salvager lets us have a 3-3 three, three golem and then we can pay two and tap it and put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you token you control um, they gain trample onto the turn, which is kind of relevant Savala of Explorer returned, lets us do the whole parlay thing again, a bit like um, Fabine does, but this one gives us mana and life gain. Wojek Investigator lets us investigate as long at the beginning of your upkeep, investigate once for each opponent who has more cards in hand than you. So we do get to do the card draws occasionally, so we do get the occasional one, but that's very rare. Apothecary White gives us more food and gives us more ways of making tokens, which are important to us. Benny Brax, Zoologist, makes an appearance because we're making tokens. We must well get an extra card draw that way. Um, that will also trigger Joel, just so we're clear, because it still happens to your turn. Might Overseer. Now, not here to make Phyrexian tokens, I'll be honest. We can at a push, but there's no real need to. But as long as it's your turn, creature tokens you control get plus one, plus zero, and have first strike. That's what it's here for, to make all our tokens a little bit bigger and a little bit more dangerous. Because you know, even Mariel's ones will all get that when they come into attack. So, and the Leah is even better because it gives all our attacking tokens double strike. Um, yeah. Um, Nalia, God of the Hunt, however, gives all our tokens everything we have trampled, and then we can pump things up if we need to. 
Silvala, the Eagle Trailblazer, just gives us, um, whenever we cast a creature spell, we get a red mercenary, and then we get to tap it to choose a colour. Um, add one mana of each of, of that colour for each different power among creatures you control. Hmm, useful. Abel Adrian, Goran's Ward is here, just so we can exile things that we need to, and then to keep them safe and then let ourselves get killed off. It gives us a whole load of token soldiers if we need to you know, go through something, which is possible. Angelic Cell Sword. Um, is another one that gives us mercenaries each time we can't or uh, another non or when non-token creatures in the battlefield so another way of getting the mercenaries um, but if we can make her power six by pumping her up uh, with those mercenaries maybe or some other way and we get to draw a card when she attacks so you know flying vigilance six four yeah okay with card we'll go with that yeah my obsession with bone hall dracosaur continues um red deck had to have it here i'm not gonna say more than that having played kazoo the tyrant of the cliffs though um this one people forget about it. if they attack you if you're a defending player you get a three three ogre token onto the battlefield and they say pay three mana that like, people do forget to pay the three occasionally so you do get the ogres more readily than you would you do than you would think you would do but so keep it going it's good fun um, Roxanne, Starfall Servant, Mars will come into play. Um, give us those lovely, lovely meteor tokens and then double up the mana producing by our artifacts. Yeah, I'm playing a red, green, white deck. And I've got elves in the deck. Yes, I haven't got many wolves, but I've got elves in the deck, so Voja makes an appearance. Sorry. Um, dragon Brood Mother gives us a 1 1 red, green dragon creature token at the beginning of each upkeep that has Devour 2, so we can always eat some of the other tokens if we want to. Um, Gruff Triplets is Gruff Triplets. Comes into play with 9 mana, 9 power for 6 mana, basically. And then hope as they die, you get one massive Gruff Triplet. So, yeah, we'll go with that. Ojatag, well, the deepest foundation, as we all know, doubles up, uh, triples up on our creature tokens we control. Um, Hazma, Hazion, Haz, Hazon Tamar, I'll get it right, so I'm a bit tongue tied. Um, as a battlefield, you get a whole load of sand warrior creature tokens, but when Hazion Tamir dies, they disappear again. But I figured for that one turn of having all those creatures come into play would be good fun. Omnath, Locus of Rage, is also in just for a big bit of bouncing, well, killiness at the end, I suppose. Landfall gives you the elementals, and when they die, you get to lightning bolt people. Two Planeswalkers, nothing too fancy. Um, Luca, Bound to Ruin, I decide to play. Just gives, gives a plus one for the bit of mana ramp, or we can do the minus one and get a green, 3-3 three, three green Phyrexian Beast token with Toxic. The minus four, if we can get it off, is fine. Um, especially if you've got something that's really big where X is the greatest power amongst creatures you control as you activate this ability. If you've got a big one in play, you know, I'm looking at maybe you know, gruff triplets being maximized up to 12 12. Um, that's a lot of damage to share around for four mana. So, but yeah, you, know, you do need to make sure that when you cast Luca, you pay the full mana cost, not the Phyrexian mana, and you end up with less loyalty counts on it. You can't do the minus four straight away, so bear that in mind. Spells. Um, former Posse gives us a whole load of mercenaries, which is quite good fun with Fabine in play because they all get haste. So, yes, thank you very much. So you can either pump one of your flyers up if you need to to go for an alpha strike or just attack with a whole load of 1 1s. Makes sense to me. Nature's Law, Rampant Growth, three visits, and Cultivate, do all the ramp stuff. I'm not going to go too much. Oh, and Jessica's Will to a certain extent. Um, we've got Raise the Alarm for a few more soldier tokens if we need them. Servo Expedition, give us servo tokens. Cabaretti Charm, um, deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to target creature or planeswalk if you need to take something out. Or we can give all our creatures plus one, plus one, and trample until the end of the turn. Or go and get two more citizen tokens. This is going to be the second one you do most of the time, the plus one, plus one, and trample to pump through, I'd guess. Um, generous gift to remove something that's annoying us and give them an elephant. And march of the multitudes, because who doesn't like a whole load of white soldier tokens with life link when we can pay green to white and convoke into X? Yeah, should be pretty straightforward to do. Um, Artifacts didn't go too heavy for a change for me. Um, Jeweled Lotus is here to cast put to cast for Bean. Soul Ring, Arcane Signet. That's more than enough mana ramp, I think, with the amount of stuff we've got going on. Um, and then Dowsing Dagger. Um, put this on something, get it flipped into the Lost Veil as soon as possible. It helps your mana ramping immensely. Um, I mean, we have got you know, one, 
two, three, four, four green spells ramp, plus these two, plus a whole load of creatures up here. I'm not worried about getting the, too much ramp on in this deck. But if you think I'm playing too this light effect ramp, feel free to go and up what you're doing. Enchantment wise, um, Garrick's Uprising gives all our creatures trample. Uh, we have the odd creature with power of four or more, so we may get the odd card draw. Um, but at least we get it, yeah. We'll see, but it's giving everything tramples what's really here for. A lot of token doublers, anointed procession, parallel lives, and doubling season are all here. Um, we have search the premises as well. Whenever a creature you attacks you or plays walker you control, we get to investigate, gives us another way of drawing some extra cards. Yep, smothering tides here. Yeah, shoot me. Um, <laughs> a journey fells the god side, gives a real bit of targeted removal which is lovely and then we get another cat token then we give something double strike i really do like this um saga i think it's really underplayed from h3 and i really do enjoy it assemble the legion because who doesn't want to have loads and loads of soldiers coming to play anyway with haste seems good to me um glorious sunrises here it gives all our creatures plus one plus one and trample on combat on our turn or we can draw a card or gain some life or give a make a land give us plus tap for three green it's going to be the first one or the last one most of the time i feel with this deck and then oath of oil um two humans then two knights and then an indestructible counter on up to a human and we become the monarch thank you very much i will go with that land wise green red and white lands all the way through there are some expensive lands with the search lands um, although it does make me laugh that moss fire valley is now at 3.89 tickets and every mess is 2.67 so you know sack lands are cheaper um nothing really that fancy here is all the things you'd expect to see in a red green and white deck um, there is Reliquary Tower here and Temple of the False God because I know they weren't in yesterday's deck. So hey, hum, they're back today. And that is it for today. I think for being that I will be playing for a little while, it's be probably going to become one of my preferred Naya decks for a while. Voge is still up there for me, unfortunately. But for being maybe a close second, and I'm very glad that Daybreak Games is still adding the backlog commanders into MTGO. So as we get more then maybe a few more of these videos come along but next week i'll still have a look at another couple of assassin's creed cards um and then there'll be an information video at some stage because i'm going on holiday soon so it's going to be a bit of a pause hope maybe to the channel depends how much time i get to record videos so there may be instead of being four there may be three a week for a couple of weeks while i'm on holiday but we'll see how much time i get but i'll talk about it next week but for now it's 446 of you subscribed here if you can hit the subscribe button down below help me out get me closer to 500 um come and see me i'll play for being tonight on the stream I, this is going out live for me on thursday over in uk time so if you're watching it in stateside and it's in the evening well, you have to wait until tomorrow night. Um, but yeah, I'll give Fabian a run out on the stream on Thursday night. So look forward to that. But for now, thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.